G'day and welcome to our third episode of How to Make Stuff with Cameron. Today I'm going to be showing you how I built this CNC machine with three axes for under $120 using stuff you can get from your local hardware store. The only thing I had to buy off the internet was this stepper motor kit itself and that will be in an episode all by itself where I actually fit the stepper motors in because as you can see I've only put one on so far so I'm still going to do a bit more on that. But um, I'll show you how to build this whole thing and it's only, you only have to use simple power tools. I used about three of them just to do the whole thing. So anyone can do this and it's not too difficult. Okay, so this I used SketchUp to design this. Now this is uh, based off using uh, 610, uh, 510 millimeter draw slides and 16 millimeter MDF, which comes in, a, I've sort of designed it all to be around the standard size sheets and measurements of timber that you'd get your local hardware store. So um, MDF normally comes in uh, 600 wide by 900 long in the 16 millimeter sheets you can get and I've used the uh, 42 by 19 millimeter uh, bits of pine box for all the um, mounting points for the draw slides and even though I'm not particular, I can't draw um, very well on this but sort of done these little handles and stuff to sort of represent like I'm not, I'm not going to follow this exactly but it'll give me the cutting measurements for all the side pieces and um, the width and all that and um, I'll be able to sort of figure out the rest by myself. Okay so what I've done here is taken my CAD drawing and printed out a number of uh, different uh, views of it to make it a bit easier for myself to sort of you know see what I'm doing. Also down here I've basically figured out what parts I need to cut from these measurements here but, um, but yeah having this on hand definitely makes it easier to, to do this. Okay, so basically what I've got here is all the tools and all the materials that I'm going to be using for this build. Now, starting off with the tools, basically what I'm going to be using to build it is I'm going to be using my drill, I'm going to be using my impact driver, some drill bits. To secure it, I'm going to be using some uh, MDF screws and some extra strength liquid nails. How I'm going to be getting smooth linear motion is I'm going to be using these uh, heavy duty um, bearing, or not bearings, um, draw slides that I got from Bunnings and they cost about 19 bucks each and they're you know, not too bad. Um, the main material I'm using is MDNF and I've got some cheap pine that I have on special as well. Um, I've also got some threaded rod here, some nuts, some washers and so I don't know if I mentioned drill bits but um, I've got drill bits as well. Um, these two here are the motors that, or the routers that I'm going to be using to actually um, do the cutting when I actually finish this thing. Now I've got my straight grinder here which can fit your standard router bits and these tungsten carbide uh, burrs and I've got my Dremel tool which can fit a variety of things. So both of these I find will think will be very useful. I also intend on fitting a plasma cutter to it but that I don't have that with me at the moment so I'll be doing, I'll have to make a new base for it as well so that's all in the future. Okay, I've screwed these two bits of 42 by 19 on. I haven't glued them yet because I'm just going to fit everything up and make sure it all works first. Um, I've atta also attached these two draw slides. Um, they're very, they're, you know, they seem to be sturdy and I reckon they'll do the job quite nicely. Next part is to build the top build plate and add the two bits of 42 by 19 on the inside of these to attach these rails. Okay, this is how I've basically got this nice and lined up. Now what I've done is I've put this metal ruler that I use a bit and I've got that so it's got a bit of clearance and also got a nice sturdy sort of flat surface to hold it off because I don't want it to be rubbing on the bottom plate and underneath that I've got this bit of MDF that's just a cut off and I've had to put two little shims one on this end one on that end to get it to the same level as this one here because all the bolt heads are sitting out just a little bit so this gives me a sort of pretty angle it makes it it makes it level so yeah okay finished the first axis smooth doesn't have any really any wobbling so I'm pretty happy with it now this here is a mechanism that allows me to have controlled movement of this um, basically sliding table now what I've got is a big bit of threaded rod I've got this bolt which I've set into this bit of wood by using a bunch of drill bits and a chisel um, I'll show you how to do that soon, but um, I didn't, wasn't too sure how well this was going to work. I didn't even have to use uh, fasteners, I just hammered it in and it's seal sealed very nicely. Um, what I've done at the end here, to, um, I'm going to be putting a washer there and also this 
this handle I made with just a bit of um, with a bit of bar and I've glued it into the end. I've also got a grub screw on the end so that this bit of, I've ground a bit flat here so that that way it gets a good grip on this handle. Okay, coming around to the back here now this bit here actually bolts up to there so just put it out of the way. Coming around the back here, I've also got to secure the other end so that it, um, the rod doesn't move. Now I've used um, arrow dies to, um, not arrow dies, um, Loctite to set that. It's only the, the semi-permanent one, so you can undo it if I want to. But um, I've also put a washer and grease uh, used CRC on the whole rod to give it nice smooth motion. This is, this is what you're Somebody just did a big poo on one of my work pieces and stained it. Instead of buying a, um, a countersink uh, drill bit, one thing I like to use is this um, uh, step drill bit. It's you know you can do a hole like obviously up to this size, down to this size, um, but it works very well as a countersink as well if you're a bit careful with it. So I've countersunk all the holes. But um, yeah, just thought I'd let you know, save you a bit of money. Quick update here. Yeah, um, these two side bits are not actually attached to the um, base yet. I've got to figure out where the actual um, motors are going to sit and it's going to get me the most range of movement to cover the whole base. Um, this part here is going to be the, basically the, um, oh, I don't know the proper word for it, but it's basically going to be like the carriage or whatever and it's going to sit on the bearings up here and hold the motors and stuff like that. So um, I've slightly adjusted the design from my CAD drawing just because um, I figured a way I could make it a little bit stronger and work a little bit better, so I'm going to do it this way. Um, so yeah, I'll get back to you once I've done a little bit more. When mounting runners, I also recommend starting with the outside holes first. It'll keep it a lot more stable when you're doing it. Um, all you have to do is move the um, inside runner slightly to, to the right, and um, also take out the insert which goes onto the opposite side. Okay, this is um, basically where the top gantry plate is going to go. Now this allows me to have um, sideways sliding. Now um, the reason I've got four slides on this one instead of just two is because it's coming around this corner, I figure there's going to be a lot more load on it because you're going to have the tool that's going to be mounted down this way and there's going to be a long, um, what do you call it, there's going to be the lowering mechanism which is going to put more force on it uh, this direction. So I figured with, extra, with these extra slides on it, it should give it enough strength to sort of stop it wobbling around too much. Okay, this is the gantry that I've um, just finished. And now, it's a little bit tight, but um, I think with a bit of, bit, of, um, bit of usage, it will loosen up a bit. I've also chucked a bit of WD-40 on it, and that's definitely improved it. But um, it took a lot of playing around to get this right. If I was to design it again, I probably wouldn't have these top two in the same way as they are. I'd probably do that, redesign that. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, this is the first stage of how I make the, um, basically how I make this thing move along by setting a nut into the wood. First I get a bit of threaded rod and hang it through like this, and then I draw around it. I then take, using my drill press, I have set it so it's no deeper than the nut, and installing a small drill bit that I can drill at each of the corners. Okay, well done, I've obviously drilled a few more holes than just on the edge, but um, I've tried to get as many in there as I can. I couldn't get any over this side just because it was too thin. Um, now what I'm going to do is use this thin chisel to sort of go around each each edge and sort of just chip in until it hits the bottom of the drill holes. And at that point it will chip out into this and I'm just going to clear it out with the drill again. I've just gone, this is just going around twice and you can, as you can already see it's mostly coming out now. A couple more hits and it should be done. Yeah, that's what it should roughly look like when you're done. Yeah, just a pretty good fit. And there you go, now I'm just going to secure that with some epoxy and it should be a nice strong fit. To make this simple handle all I've done is taken a bit of 42 by 19 which I had left over, put a screw through the end and chopped it to the right length just so it doesn't stick out too much and I've taken this bit of steel round stock which is a solid steel and to use hot glue or you can use epoxy or um, super glue just to stick it in the end obviously you're going to need to drill a hole um, the reason you should put it in the end is because I put it the first one I put it through the side and it ended up splitting the wood when I tightened it up too much so it doesn't do that when you put it through the end okay I've taken the handle off just so it's not as slow so I can give you a demonstration of it actually moving but here we go Okay, 
Okay, finally finished the last stage. Uh, next step is to mount it. I'm going to be using these L brackets as well as putting some screws through these bits of 42 by 19. I'm going to have to remove the um, face plate, whatever you want to call it, um, from it to get to it. But um, but yeah, that's the next step. I'm also going to be adding some brackets on the side, which will give it a bit of extra strength as well. So um, so yeah. Okay, now I've managed to finish um, installing this um, the X axis. I mean Z axis. So now I have all three of them. Um, next thing to do is install the tools. Okay, I'll be demonstrating proper um, tin snipping technique. Now, these two parts here are basically used to curve the metal up in this particular way here. Now, so you want to have this part here sitting resting on this bit of metal, and you want to have this part here underneath here. So basically, it'll lever it up as you cut it. Um, another thing to take note of is don't use the end of the tin snips. You only want to use this small area about here. It gives you a better cut. It gives you a better cut, and you're going to have less burrs. Now, also one thing you want to do is apply a fair bit of forward pressure. So, like, obviously, I'd prefer to have this clamped and something, but for this demonstration, I'm not. So, I'm just going to secure it like that. Hold back far on the handle, and just take little cuts and just quickly pushing and work your way along. Now, it's not a particularly fast process, but it's relatively accurate. And for I'm going to be using this to make some. Uh, what do you call the straps that are going to hold down the tools so but yeah so you get the basic gist okay so this is what i use those bits of metal i was cutting out before um, this tool holder here is designed to work for the dremel tool and this straight die, die grinder um, there was a modification like to make it fit both um, to get this one to fit because it's a lot bigger than the dremel i had to cut a large triangle out and sort of uh, grind these edges away but um i didn't waste the actual off cut I decided because it fits perfectly, I um, would use it to mount the Dremel tool. So what I've done is I've cut a, uh, what do you call it, using that uh, jigsaw, I've cut a, a semicircle out of it. Um, also to keep it from moving around, I've drilled two holes in it and um, uh, put screws through this into here at different angles just so it holds it and stops it moving around when, it, um, when the tool's on. Um, to get this tight, it was actually, um, the front one was no problem at all because it's got a rubber, uh, basically a little handle on it, um, it sort of just, as the metal tightened up on it, it just compressed the rubber and it's holding it there really firmly. This one here was, even when I tightened it up, it was still a little bit loose. So what I did to remedy that was I got a bit of a, um, what was this, like the center part of a drill packet and I chopped a bit out of it and used it as a shim. Now, because this was pretty tight, when I just as like once I bent the, bent the metal around, um, all I had to do was loosen it off, put the shim underneath it, tighten it back down, and that's made it super strong now. So I think this will work very nicely. Okay, I finished the Dremel clips. Now, basically, how I um, did this part here, it was a fair bit more difficult than the other one, just for the fact that obviously I had to um, make it go over these the switch and the little lock button. Um, how I got this little square in on the inside is I drilled, used a drill bit the same size as this width. I drilled a bunch of holes as well as four smaller ones in each corner. And then I filed it out and um, we we'll used tin snips and pliers to sort of get it into the right shape. Then after positioning it over here, I sort of, with this little hammer and um, using my vise, I managed to hammer it into the right shape. Okay, I'm just about to finish. Um, I've mounted the tool, or the Dremel in this case, but I can mount the, um, the uh, die grinder if I wish to. All I've got to do is um, finish screwing in these side bits. I've, um, what do you call, I've also made these clamps for it, which is just a bit of bent flat bar with a couple of holes in it so I can screw it into this. And I've got a bit clamped in here just to give it a little test and it works very nicely. Um, yeah, so oh, the only other thing I have to do is put some feet on it. So I'm going to give it a test now and see how she goes. First cut with the um, Dremel tool and came out pretty nice. Okay, to make the feet I've counterboard it with a hole larger than the actual drill head because they're not long enough to make it the whole way through and get into the material I want to get into. Um, I've also had to drill a pilot hole because which is larger than the thread so it doesn't actually cut into this the block itself that way it'll make it a lot easier for me to screw it in and it won't um it'll stop there being a gap between the other feet and the actual base okay i've got both the x and y axis um, fully extended um 
as you can see I can get from all the way over that back corner to the front here with um, with the router head um, so I'm pretty happy with the amount of workspace I've managed to get with this thing uh, especially considering it only cost me $120 to build if you have a tight number screw too much like I've just done and uh, basically tear it, uh, make it so you can't tighten it anymore, it'll just spin, it, uh, spin inside the hole. Uh, one thing you can do to fix that is you take a regular match like this one, I've got it fit into the hole already, I've also tightened it up just a little bit. Um, what you do is you screw it in and you break off any excess and you've got a nice tight fit again. Okay, I've added uh, one sacrificial board to this build plate and I've added one permanent one. Um, I've also laid out this grid pattern on top of it. Um, the grid pattern is going to serve as basically a, a marking point to um, drill a bunch of holes that are going to insert these nut certs. Now basically what a nut cert is, is it's um, threaded on the outside to um, bind into the wood and it's threaded on the inside with an M6 thread so I can screw in a bolt. Now, what I'm gonna, basically it's going to sort of be recessed in like that so the tool is not going to hit it. But um, I'm going to put one of these at each um, intersection point and also these lines are going to help with um, getting things to sort of, you know, parallel or square um, to the way this is going to move. Okay, as you can see I've um, drilled and inserted all the nut certs in all the ones but these last four. Um, Basically how you do it is you take yourself a 9mm bit, I've marked the depth I need to go with this bit of tape and you want a 6mm bit which will allow the nut, because these things basically allow the nut to go the whole way through. Um, so I start with this one, I've also, I've also used the nail to sort of tap a centre point on each of these to make it easy for this nut to sort of, I mean the, this drill bit to find the hole, like when I'm sort of putting it in. Um, but yeah, so you drill this, you use the first one, drill down to the depth you want and then you take the second one and go all the way through and that way you can have a huge amount of adjustment with the M6 nuts. Now the reason I've used the big bit first is because it's got this, all my, all these drill bits I have have this little um, extra bit that sort of sits up proud of the, um, the rest of the drill head. Um, it makes it very easy to align the smaller drill bit. Now I'm going to insert this in. Um, Basically there's two ways you can do it. You can either use an Allen key and do it by hand, but the way I prefer to do it is with my impact driver and the Allen key bit in. So we'll just punch it in. Yeah, I'm happy with how high that is, so I'm going to leave it. So hopefully you liked our third episode of how to make stuff with camera. Next time we're going to be doing some modifications to this CNC machine, which is I'm going to show you how I did this uh, vacuum tube, uh, vacuum pipe, which is going to suck up the debris, and this uh, metal case or wire case. And we're also going to be doing the stepper motors, just to sort of show you how I did that. And we're going to be doing the wiring on it as well. So I'm going to cover the finishing of this project, hopefully, and we'll get to give it a proper run.